Hi, Brian from Tallman Minis here. In this video, I'm going to show you how to finish the detailing on your Blood Angels army. This is part 3 in a series of 4, so be sure to check out parts 1 and 2, where I cover how to paint the armour and the various helmet schemes. I'll link them in the description below, and in the cards at the top right of this video. Part 4 will cover how I do my basing effect, and it's on the way very soon. So this model has been painted using the same techniques I've described in part 1. And just quickly, I wanted to explain that apart from the armour painting stage and the oil wash, I don't really have a workflow when I'm painting a model. The main reason for this is I work full time in the media industry, and when I do get time to paint, I generally only have time to paint one particular area of a miniature, for example the armour, or the pouches, or the boulders. I'll usually spend a few days just batch painting different areas on a miniature in order to get through a full squad. My point is that if you break your painting up into sections like this, you'll be able to fit it into your schedule too. Never think that you don't have enough time to pick this up as a hobby. So let's begin just after the oil wash. I've applied here a coat of AK Ultra Matte Varnish. For black areas like the belt and the black carapace, I use a thin coat of GW Abaddon Black or Contrast Black Templar. On top of Vallejo heavy charcoal, thin coat goes on very easily and you shouldn't need a second. To highlight, we're going to use the same recipe for the Aquila as we did in part 1. This works for anything black. So for the first highlight, I'm going to use GW Dark Reaper. And I'm just going to give the black areas a small edge highlight. Next, I'm going to use GW Thunderhawk Blue and give a smaller edge highlight. Concentrate this closer to areas that catch the light, like the corners or the top curve of a shoulder pad. Don't cover up your first highlight completely. Finally, using some GW Administratum Grey, pick out the edges that would catch the light, like the corners, and keep those highlights small. For leather items, I use a base coat of GW Rhinox Hide. Oh, and don't be like me and forget any leather straps. I always forget boulder straps if the model has one. It's so frustrating and I always notice it just at the end. Next, give a generous wash of GW Agrax Earthshade. Next, I'm going to give it an edge highlight of GW Mornfang Brown. Now, this next bit is an optional stage, but if you want, you can add a little bit more texture and detail. Thin down your Mornfang Brown just a little more, angle your mini, and have a look at the holster. You'll see some small dimples reflect it in the light. Take your thin down mix and stipple a few lines from the edge highlight to about halfway across the holster. I think this adds a really nice bit of depth and standout detail. For boulders and silver metallics, I like to use Vallejo Metal Dark Aluminium. This is an airbrush paint, so be careful you don't overload your brush or it will easily flood the area that you want to paint. For Blood Angel boulders, I like to leave a small section of the casing black or grey to help them stand out. Do give it a good 10 minutes to fully dry though, as it can sometimes contaminate your brush in the next stage if it's not given time to cure. This can transfer back to the pot of wash or paint that you'll be using, and it'll ruin future paint jobs. Next, I give a very generous wash in GW Nuln Oil, sometimes too, because I like that greasy, grim, dark look. I don't mind if it pools here, as long as it doesn't overflow, but that's just my personal preference. Feel free to try and experiment and find what works best for you. Now, go and put the kettle on, make a cup of tea, and give this 20 minutes to dry. To highlight, I'm going to use Vallejo Metal White Aluminium. Again, this is a very fluid paint for airbrushing, so be careful you don't overload your brush, and wipe off the excess. DW Rune Lord Steel is a good alternative here. Pick out any raised areas in the bolters that you think would stand out to add some depth, like the barrel and the sights. 
Any mistakes you make here can just be passed off as scratches and battle damage, so don't worry too much about making mistakes. This recipe also works for any silver items, including relics or the emblems on shoulder pads. For anything gold in the model, I like to use my custom gold mix. So I'm going to use an old size zero brush here and take two parts GW Retributor Armor and one part Vallejo Metal Gold. This gives me a really nice rich gold that's not too red and not too green. I also use this for the gold helmets of Veteran and Command. Again, this is great coverage and due to the increased pigment count, it can be thinned slightly more than say a normal metallic paint. So if you do need a second coat, just give it a little bit of water and reapply. And then to shade, I'm going to give a generous wash of GW Reichland Flesh Shade. Don't overload your brush, but just try to paint into the recesses and allow it to dry. For these gold parts, I don't usually highlight them, but if you want to, you can use Scale 75 Elven Gold. For any miscellaneous items like ropes, I like to give them a wash of GW Seraphim Sepia or going over each segment with a small spot highlight of GW Wraithbone. Next, I wanted to cover blood gems. But before I do, I wanted to explain, like I did in the previous video, due to my height, I suffer from a bad back. And unfortunately, when I was painting these, I just could not get comfortable. And as a result, well, I forgot to press record on one scene, and the other scenes have a little bit of a soft focus as the camera was having a difficult time with me shifting positions. But I've made this handy little graphic to go alongside the footage and I'm going to use that to help demonstrate what you're looking for in this scene. So let's start by giving the gems a thin coat of GW Corax White. For the base coat, I'm going to apply GW Contrast Blood Angels Red. For the first highlight, we're going to use one part Vallejo Game Bloody Red and one part Vallejo Game Orange Fire. Now for the first highlight, you want to apply a very thin J shape along the right hand side of the gem. I've only thinned this down a little, but you may need two coats. For the second highlight, we're going to take some Vallejo Game Orange Fire and apply the smaller highlight just at the apex of the blood gem. Try to keep this thinner than the red highlight if you can, but don't worry, it will still look great either way. Now we have to apply some dreaded white dots. Here I'm using Vallejo Game Dead White. You want to apply a small white dot just in the centre of your orange highlight. Then, in the top left, apply a dot and a line, or a series of dots. And here they are complete. This simple technique really helps your miniatures to stand out on the battlefield. So, one item I didn't attach to the model before I started was the purity seals. I often forget these because I prime them separately and then I put them in my bits box so I don't lose them. For the parchment, I now paint these with GW Rackhearth Flesh, but on previous models, I've used GW Wraithbone. Both colours work really well. I only started using Rackhearth Flesh because I got it free with Imperium Magazine. Give the parchment a thin down coat, and don't forget to do the back. On Blood Angels, I like to paint the wax seal in Vallejo Heavy Violet. There's enough scarlet on red on these guys, so red seals just get lost in the mix. Heavy violet is an extra opaque colour, so thinned down it still covers really well. Now give the whole thing a generous wash of seraphim sepia. The easiest way to highlight the parchment is just to use the base colour. To highlight the wax, I simply add some white to the heavy violet to create a lighter shade.
Now, because this miniature is painted, I'm using a tiny bit of super glue to attach the seal so I don't damage the paint. And with that, you're done. I chose this miniature so I could compare him against the model I painted last year. He's not perfect, I can see some mistakes, but it's nice to compare him against an older model because that way you can see what skills you've improved in and others that you need to work on. So until part four, remember, enjoy your painting, have fun, and I'll see you soon.